Here's the story. Uh, there's this movie that came out, The Green Book. It, we were talking about it, and that reminded me of my Green Book story. So that, this is my Green Book story. I was uh, born and raised in the Bronx, second generation New Yorkers, and I had uh, two dear friends. They were roommates, a, a man, two men, and we were buddies. We had a wonderful time in New York City. We could go anywhere, within reason. You weren't stupid, but the west side of New York, the upper west side, Greenwich Village, Chinatown, we loved it. We had a great life. Went to school there, the city universities. Life was good. So the three of us were great friends. And it was a pl pleasure, a blessing, to have two guys friends. So we just, oh, and we lived two existences. Uh, middle class, college grads, starting careers, intact families, S that, same time hippie, drummers, uh, a little light drugs, uh, Greenwich Village. So we had this wonderful dual, but that was the norm in our group. So we had an idea, I don't know wh who started it, let's go to Mexico. Now we had heard <laughs> that there was this wonderful town in Mexico, artsy fartsy, filled with artists and other things, and it was a great place. A and because after World War II, they had started an art colony there, so it was really swinging. So we said, "Let's go to Mexico." All righty. We were working, but I ha I was teaching, so I had a month off. Morty took him; he was an engineer. He took a mo month off. I Joe, I don't know what he was doing. We all were off. We get in Morty's car. He had like a, a, a Dodge, some of those big silly cars. We drive up to his mother's house in the Bronx to say goodbye. We had said goodbye to the others. We we're in Morty's car. We go to her, the mother's house to say goodbye. And this is important. She gives us a bag of sandwiches. And she says, these cadentifleisch sandwiches will hold you on your trip. And we're laughing. <laughs> Content of life. Who needs that? We found out later it was pot roast. Who needs that? Ha ha ha. We get in the car. We're going. We go across the Triborough Bridge. We're like an hour out of New York City. We stop to get gas and we eat the content of life sandwiches because we're going to Mexico. What do we care? Well, sweetie, we drive, we get to uh, southern New Jersey and we say, oh, let's stop there. It's a nice diner. So we go up to the, we pull up, we go up to the diner. And they open the door in the diner a little bit and say, no, 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 this is a club. Are you a member? And they close the door. So we say, well, what's that? Get back in the car. We go, we're through Pennsylvania, southern Pennsylvania. We go to another place. Uh, they open, I remember the blinds. They're looking through the blinds instead of like just saying, and that's it. We can't get in. We go to one more place I don't remember anymore, maybe Maryland. The door, wait, this here's a, I remember this here's a private club. Are you all members? I remember that phrase. We're closed now. We're closed for today. That was another, that was Maryland. We finally get it. Duh. We can't go to these places to eat. We can, and they're like roadside crummy places. So we start eating out of gar uh, garages. What are those called? When you go to get gas, gas stations, the machines, and we can get gas. So we go, oh, now we're going to make a left turn down to Mexico. We're now, now we're going south. <laughs> and we're going south. There's nowhere we could eat. We don't, we, there's nowhere we could stop. We had never, we had never heard of a green book. We, there was no need for us ever to hear about a green book. We were New Yorkers. You could go anywhere within reason. Oh, you had enough, you, you knew, you knew the lay of the, loud, of the land. So there we were, now we're going south. <laughs> and we're in big trouble. <laughs> we haven't had a meal since the Gadenta flight. <laughs> so the car, we're in Texarkana, Arkansas. And this car, this, it was a DeSoto or a Buick, something that you don't want now, starts making noises. So we get a little nervous. What are we going to do? So we get into the main street of Texarkana, Arkansas, and we decide, I, the sweet 
girl will do the talking because Morty had a big mustache, red hair. Joe had a bigger mustache, red, a dark hair. Joe was even, he was 6'2". Uh, they were to be reckoned with. So they don't, don't, don't bring them out. I go in with my 98 pound self. I go into a diner on Main Street, Texarkana, and I open the door. The, di the diner's filled, and they all turn and stare at me. But I can handle this. And I say, excuse me, <laughs> we're driving from uh, New York. I, I don't think I said that. Now we're driving. We're going to Mexico, and our car is making really bad noises. Do you know where there's a garage? Oh, I say to a, sitting at the counter, the sheriff with the gun and the hat and the hauler cap. And he looks at me, he, turn, he swivels his very thick neck, his mouth is agape, and he stares at me, and I say it again. I said, excuse me, our car, we need a garage. We don't know where to go. Can you help us? Third time, and the room is silent, and they're staring at me. And Joe and Morty are outside, thank gosh. And he looks at me and he says, the sheriff says, oh, you all want the colored motel. I say, fine, yes, if that's what you say, yes. Well, he, it clicks. He gets up, we go outside, and then he sees Morty and Joe, duh. They call, the sheriff calls the colored motel, who, the car can run, can drive, but it's shaky. They come, the, 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 man, the owner of the motel comes, we all go, off to the Colored Motel. Goodbye, Sheriff. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The motel is run by a man called Mr. Pukram. Mr. Pukram is the number one man in the town. He's got this motel. He is so charming, so loving, so protective of these smarty pants from New York City. He takes us into his motel. We're, sh we're sharing a room. I get the cot. He fix. We haven't eaten since the cadenta flash. He fixes us a meal. I, <laughs> I can still taste that meal. He fries that chicken. Co has the greens, the cornbread, the sweet potatoes. He's got that. That's every Wednesday. They always have it. And what Tuesday? We got it. We had the best meal in our life. We sit down and he tells us, and while the car is being fixed, he tells us all about the town, the workings of the town, and how, what's going on, and we're in the right place with him, and we say, thank you, thank you, thank you. We go to sleep. The next day, midday, the car is fixed. We're set. We go off. We now we continue south, 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 south. We're going to Mexico. We cross the border at Monterey. Monterey, then, this is 61-ish. Then it was a, a Mexico lovely town. We go into Monterey, we cross the border, we're on Main Street, Monterey, we go into a restaurant, we have the, the little boys are outside looking at this, whatever it was, DeSoto, I don't remember what it was, this big car. We say to them, watch the car, si sí, senor, that we call them watchacaros. The watchacaros are out there watching our car. We go into a restaurant, Main Street, Monterey where we finally are home, where we are welcomed. We had a Mexican chicken soup uh, with a touch of cilantro, a uh, touch of lemon drops. To this day, I put lemon drops in my chicken soup. It was heaven. We were home. And that was Mexico for us. That was our trip. We continued south to San Miguel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the artsy town. But the traveling down was some adventure. The only time we slept was at Mr. Pookum's. Otherwise, we was taking turns in the car. But we were young and healthy, and we didn't think about it. We were so naive. <laughs> well, on, in one, on one level. On another level, we knew not to get in trouble. And that was our trip.